As I've said before, this is a nine week long sermon about living as Shalom. And remember, Shalom means if I offer you Shalom, it's more than peace. It means I offer you the richness and fullness of all that God has to offer you. So when I offer you Shalom, that's it. And in today's gospel passage in particular, we have an action of Shalom. You may not see that at first because your mind is geared towards the idea of how justice is going to unfold for this wicked slave who will not give a small debt uh, its freedom by releasing him from debt after he'd had 10,000, a huge debt released. And our minds are like going down the line there, understanding we should love somebody and forgive them. And trust me, we all know how hard that is. I would like to present this in a light like this. You may have heard me say once or twice in the times I visited you, because it comes out, may the blessing of God find you when you least expect it and need it most. I'll say that again. May the blessing of God find you when you least expect it and need it most. In my mind, that is an action of shalom happening. Uh, the fullness and richness of God finding you, especially when you least expected you, when you were most downtrodden or worried or upset or afraid or something. I mean, by the way, that's the whole Jesus thing. So don't, don't forget there's a macro and a micro in this, in this particular message. So in this story, it's fairly easy to see. My gosh. The slave that owed 10,000 talents, the blessing of his master, the blessing of God found him, frankly, when he least expected it, and guess what? Needed it most. So the real question is, how do you handle such a blessing? Now remember, if we're followers of Jesus, we're answering that question every day as we think about how we follow him and share his love, which is how the gospel passage ends. And, and oh, by the way, if we needed another example, in a few weeks, I can't remember if the Old Testament scriptures catch up from the release of the captives through the Red Sea to the moment when Moses goes up to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. What, what are the folks doing down below after they've had this great blessing of God? They have a party. And if you look at the translation for the word party or how they partied, it's very cleaned up with the golden calf and stuff. So they didn't handle their blessing well either. So the question becomes, how well do you handle the blessing? It's a blessing like this is an invitation from God. It's an invocation from God to enter into what God yearns for you, which is the richness and fullness of all that God has to offer you. And it takes the ability to step back a little bit and see how the blessing unfolds and then to see how you can enter into it. And you have to really have some sense of self about this. So I have a personal story that for me is a wonderful touchstone because I get to tell this story. I've never done this particular story in this way before because I'm at St. Anne's in Jacksonville. I'm in a church that not only serves a community, but a community beyond that serves Marines and other military. The banners along the back wall underneath where the choir sits, Army, Marine, Navy, U.S. Air Force. By the way, happy birthday, U.S. Air Force. And Coast Guard, all right? Those are the banners that are up there. I'm waiting on the Space Force one, okay? <laughs> we all are. We'll leave that for what it's worth. Anybody in the military is having too much fun with that to begin with. But I want to tell you my story because I think you may have learned from me that at one point, the day I was ordained priest, I was given my endorsement from the bishop suffering in for the armed forces to be a chaplain in the United States Army Reserve. And so from 1996, uh, 1990 <clears throat> to 1996, I served in the U.S. Army as a chaplain in the reserves. And the, the small point of the story is, if you're not careful, 
The army can take somebody like me who likes to earn things. You know, they, they give you awards. They, they like to do a lot of, that's really good. You've done a nice job. And my uniform, by the time I finished my time, had ribbons on it, two levels of ribbons, not bad for six years. But by the way, the overseas ribbon was the, for the 14 days that I spent in um, the Bahamas with the 96 <laughs> combat engineers. Let's hear it for the way the Army gives out ribbons. Okay. Same time zone. <clears throat> but in that period, I earned two Army, uh, two Army Achievement Medals and two Ar uh, one Army Commendation Medal. And <clears throat> the unit that I was in, by the time I got to Alabama, I had been with the uh, 76th Division training up in uh, New England. We would go to Fort Jackson and train incoming soldiers and whatever. For a chaplain to receive awards at the company grade level meant somebody else in the company grade level didn't get one. So it was kind of fun competing with the other company grade officers. I'm a non-combatant. Why am I making your lives crazy? But that's part of the milieu of trying to be at your best. You gotta be careful because it's a lure. It's a worldly lure. And by the time of <clears throat> 1995 was coming into place for me, I was beginning to do some deep spiritual introspection. A, another way of saying the blessing of God had found me when I least expected it and needed it most, to be able to take stock of what it is to be someone who says, about Jesus in the words of John the Baptist, I must decrease that he might increase? Face it, I get to stand in front of you, I've got some spling on that makes me look kind of special. If I'm not careful, I can take that approbation from you and my ego gets too filled and I lose any sight of the humility that comes from the rule of St. Benedict that I shared a little bit with you last week. So here I am. I have two of these three awards. The third one I think was in play when this happened. I have visual aids. By the way, I don't know if any of you have an I Love Me wall. I bet a few of you do. That's where you put your, 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 your ribbons and your awards up on the wall so you can look at them. I, I have one of those too, come on. That's, that's, that's human, all right? My unit, the 926 Combat Engineers in Birmingham, Alabama, of the 82nd Division, um, they were worried. One of them in particular was that when we went out into field maneuvers and I did chaplain work, I would do worship in the field with a brightly colored stole. That's the priestly garb that I put around my neck. And one of the staff members one of the people that I would compete with and work with was concerned enough that he gave me a gift. And it was a gift that was a blessing of God when I least expected it and needed it most. And it helped me begin to handle that blessing because the trick is it's that listening piece to God's invitation listening carefully to God because it looks on the surface perhaps as one thing, but what are you really learning on another? The servant that had the 10,000 talents did not get the idea of forgiveness at all. And I needed to learn something about my own character. So this is the gift that I was given. It was in this little pouch. When you come up to communion, because I intend to wear this today and probably most of the time when I'm with you, because we are in the green season, this is a parachute. It's nylon. Anybody who knows how to do sewing will know how impossible it is to stitch this material. 
and the amount of hours that my fellow officer from the staff must have gone through to create this incredible gift. Because evidently I was worthy of something in their eyes that they didn't want to lose me. And they created something that would keep me safe when I was doing my work with them. And so when, when I apply this to this question of how do you handle the blessing of God when you least expect it and need it most? First off, you've got to recognize you needed it. And this became part of my reflection on how the military was beginning to personally corrupt me as a priest. It was far too easy for me to fall into the trap of wanting to look at my rank and all the stuff that comes from that, as opposed to my purpose, which was expressed in the cross that I would wear on my uniform. And then the gathering of awards was reinforcing practices that I thought I had let go by the time I found my calling that I'd had in the business world. Because if I truly want to follow a Jesus who says, um, who is greater, he who sits at the head of the table or he who serves, I came not to sit at the head of the table, but to serve. And so this gift became an opportunity for me to look more deeply at the guiding values and the principles that called me into the work that I wanted to do. And then with some of the upheavals of the military in the mid 1990s, it became clearer and clearer that the work that they wanted me to do for them was like full-time work for part-time pay. Anybody ever been in the reserves or the guard and know about that one? And I had to make the decision that I was called to serve the church first, where I got my full-time pay. And something had to let go, and it was hard especially when 2001 came and I was not there in you. But we find our ways to serve and to care and to not let go. And just as an aside, one of the gifts that keeps on giving from my time as a chaplain is that I have entree. I cannot tell you the number of people who are able to speak to me because they say, you at least wore a uniform. You get it, and then would you listen to me? And isn't that what anybody wants in any case? Isn't that a mark of shalom? Living as shalom, saying to somebody, I want for you the richness and fullness of all that God has to offer you. And so I offer this to you as a visible reminder to me about first off, the commitment that it takes to do the work of anybody who wears a uniform and anybody who supports anybody who wears a uniform. And then how we find our way to support them because we've got the commitment from Jesus Christ to support us in the power of the Holy Spirit, which is why we're here. And so I offer you today this thought. May the blessing of God find you when you least expect it and need it most. And then I pray most deeply that you handle it well as an invitation from God, from a God who yearns for you to be an extension of the love which Jesus Christ proclaims when he says, forgive your neighbor seven times seven, or where your treasure is, there your heart will be also, or, 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 or. So I thank you for the opportunity to share this. All these words I offer in the name of God. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.